And as you're likely aware, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration released its outlook for a very active 2024 Atlantic hurricane season last week. And now looking ahead, as we've told you, Saturday marks the start of hurricane season. Bank rate analyst Shannon Martin joins us live with her advice for homeowners in areas likely to be impacted like Southeast Texas. Shannon, good morning. Good morning. So first, let's get your big takeaways from NOAA's outlook released just last week. Their biggest point was to get prepared and stay prepared. I think that's the best bit of advice um, for anyone. We just need to remember that hurricane prep might look different for everyone, depending on where you live and what your financial situation is. You just need to do the best that you can to get your policy in your home as ready as it can be. Now, we know that severe weather often starts ramping up in the spring. That's exactly what we've seen this year. We just had a really bad storm knock out power for several days, cause all kinds of property damage. And as we deal with this extreme heat as well, what lessons can we perhaps learn from that last event and now take with us into hurricane season? That is not just extreme weather that's getting um, more and more intense, the heat is also getting more intense. So when we head into summer, we need to keep in mind that if tornadoes and hurricanes move through, the power could go out. And if you're elderly or if you have young children at home, anyone that needs to be hooked on any kind of life-saving medical devices, going without power for a few hours could put everyone in a serious situation. So you need to do what you can to maybe invest in a small generator, a small air conditioning unit, and again, take Noah's advice about using these type of items um, safely, use the generator outdoors, but definitely get prepared if you plan on weathering out the storm. Yes, preparedness is always key. And as you just talked about, lives are the most important. But then we start thinking about property, the things that we have invested in. What should we be considering when it comes to insurance policies and any potential coverage gaps? Absolutely. One thing I want to let everyone know is that you still have time. Hurricane season is right around the corner, but it really gets heightened towards August through October. You still have time to get that flood policy if you're thinking about waiting until next year. This year's the year. If you go through private carriers, um, your policy might start right away or you might have a five to seven day waiting period. If it's with the National Flood Float Program, you'll have a 30 day waiting period, but it'll still be in force before the major storms start hitting. And then you'll want to talk to your agent. Make sure you understand what your insurance deductible is, how it works. And again, like you said, look for any coverage gaps with your agent and get endorsements in place ahead of time. And you know, Shannon, we still have several people, including myself and my family, who tend to procrastinate, right? Maybe you're waiting until there's a name storm heading right in our direction to stock up on supplies. But we know several times things you need can be hard to find and the price goes up. So what are some of the items you think we should have in our homes right now? Like I mentioned before, portable generator, small air condition, those are really important and hard to find later on. You, If you don't have hurricane sh shutters in place on your home, make sure you have plywood, nails, hammers, everything you need to prevent further damage from happening to your home. The prices on the items get very expensive once a hurricane pulls in. And also, when the worst happens and we get a storm that causes property damage and headaches, give us an idea of kind of the first few steps that we should take versus what can wait. As long as everyone is in a safe location, one of the first things you want to do is get in touch with your insurance company, even if you're not at your home. If you've had to evacu evacuate, but you know your area has been pretty heavily damaged, still call your claim in. The adjuster will get there when they can. You don't have to necessarily list everything that's been damaged. Um, and you'll want to get in touch with local agencies for help, whether it's um, through your local fire department, local municipalities, see what extra services are available, maybe for food, um, shelter, housing, things like that, um, that might help you out before you return home. Excellent advice. And lastly, Shannon, you know, our cars are also significant investments that we've made. What's your take on what we need to consider when it comes to preparedness for our vehicles? Um, my two biggest tips are one, right now is the best time to make sure your car is in tip top shape. We all know that when you need to evacuate, a simple two hour car ride can turn into a 10 hour car ride. Make sure your oil is changed, make sure your brake tag is done, that you're in good shape there. And then make sure you have comprehensive coverage on your policy now. Mm. Once a storm is named, insurance companies do what's called a moratorium, where you can't add coverage to your policy, you can't decrease your deductible. 
your comprehensive coverage, make sure your deductible is nice and low, and then you can reassess it after hurricane season is done. Okay, I actually wasn't aware of that, so that's really great information, Shannon. Thank you so much for your expertise as we all try to get ready for whatever may be heading our way this hurricane season. Thank you.